one very practical situation that gives rise to the number e and the function e to the power of x is compound interest. So what I'm going to do first of all is just remind you what compound interest is for the case where we're compounding yearly. So t is the time in years. Um, p is the principal. That's the amount of money that we invest. R is the rate of interest per annum or per year. T is the time in years. And A is what P will amount to, what the principal amounts to after time T. So let's suppose we have a principal of one, one euro, one dollar, one whatever. So this is a fairly artificial example just to illustrate how the number E arises in compound interest. Um, let's suppose our rate of interest for the year is 10%. So we're dealing with per annum. And let's suppose that our time of the investment is 10 years. So our amount is P, which is 1, times 1 plus R, which is 10%. I'll write that as 1 over 10. And we raise it to the power of the number of years, which is 10. So we have 1.1 to the power of 10. So we get 2.59374246, etc. Now let's suppose we're compounding daily and we're dealing with a principal of just one euro again. Now since r is the rate per annum, 10% per annum um, from the previous part, if we want a daily, the rate for the per day, we divide 10% by the number of days in a year, which is about 365 days. So that's one tenth divided by 365, or one over 10 times one over 365, which is one over 3,650. And the time we need to have in days. So since we're talking about 10 years, that's 10 times 365 or 3,650 days. So if we plug all that into our formula, we get 2.717905, etc. Let's suppose we're compounding hourly. Our principal is still 1 euro. Now our rate of interest is a rate of interest per hour. So it's 10% per year. So we divide that by the number of hours in a year. 365 days in a year, 24 hours in a day. So we have 1 over, well, 10% is 1 tenth. So we have 1 over 10 times 365 times 24. That's 87,600. And our time is in hours. So that's a uh, number of years, 10, by the number of days in a year, by the number of hours, 87,600 hours. So here's the result. This is This will be our amount after 10 years if we're compounding hourly. So we can see that um, we're actually approaching some sort of a limit here. We had 2.5937, now we ha then we had 2.717 when we compounded daily. When we compound hourly, we have 2.718. And we could c continue on. We, you, you can imagine compounding per minute and then compounding per second. Then you can consider the notion of compounding continuously. Now, if we were to compound continuously, we would see that these numbers here would keep on getting bigger and bigger. The denominator here, okay, went from 10 to 3650 to 87,600, and the powers are increasing as well. Okay, I set this example up so the power is equal to the denominator. So basically what we would be doing is evaluating this limit. We would let n go to infinity. And we would approach a value, as you, as you can see, it's going to be, it's actually going to be 2.7 something. If you want to see this limit better, you could go to wolframalpha.com and look at 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n for in, increasing values of n. So I have n equals 1000 here, and we get a value of um, 2.716, 2.716, 239, etc. Now I'm just going to increase this just add on a few zeros. I'll add on one, two, three, four zeros. And n, we need to raise this to three, four. Because, you know, this is n in here. It has to be the same out here. So here we're approaching, as you can see, it's going to be 2.71828 approximately. And no matter how many zeros I add on, no matter how I increase the value of n, say I add on another four zeros. One, two, three, four. Okay, actually I've made a mistake there because this number and this number have to be the same. 
Now n is a 1 with 11 zeros. So as you can see, it hasn't changed very much. It's still 2.71828. So we're approaching a certain number. So there's a limit to this. This number is called e. So here I have e written down to five decimal places, 2.71828. So this is what one euro would amount to under continuous compounding at a rate of interest of 10% per annum. And this is over 10 years, actually. Well, yeah, that's, that was our, our original problem. One euro at 10% per annum over a time period of 10 years. So we're approaching this constant, which is given the name E. So this arises in all situations where we're compounding continuously, not just this very artificial example. So compounding continuously means compounding per millisecond, if you can imagine breaking time down into finer and finer units. So we have the number e. Now what about e to the power of x? What about this function? y equals e to the power of x, or f of x equals e to the power of x, or x is any number. Well, we could take this limit here and just raise it to the power of x. So we'd have all of this limit here to the power of x. Now it's a fact from limits, from the theory of limits, that we, if we have a sequence and we take the limit as n tends towards some value and raise the entire, um, if we take this limit and raise it to the power, it's the same as calculating this limit here. We just multiply n by x. Okay, so we just we just take what we're getting the limit of and raise it to the power of x and then calculate that limit. So I won't prove this result. This comes from analysis. So what I want to do next is look at this sequence here. So I'm going to expand this out by the binomial theorem. So just to remind you what the binomial theorem is, if we have a plus b to the power of some something, say m, well, we have m c0. Uh, we take the power m, uh, choose 0, and we raise one of the terms to the power of m and the other term to the power of 0 and the next term is m c1 a to the power of we decrease this power by 1 increase the power of b by 1 and so on we keep decreasing the power of a and increasing the power of b now if a happens to be 1 which it will be in our situation we have 1 plus 1 over n then we'll have 1 to the power of m, and of course we can just dis disregard that. We just have 1 in the product. We can disregard this because this is 1 as well, of course. 1 to the power of anything is 1. Alright, so we'll, we'll be, we'll, we will have increasing powers of b. So what we will have here is our power, c0. Our power corresponds to m in the binomial theorem. And we have b, which is 1 over n. Well, it's just to the power of 0. The next term, mc1, will be nxc1 times b to the power of 1. Well, b is 1 over n. And so on. Okay, so I'm just following the binomial theorem. So I have a series of terms. Anything nx choose 0 and is 1. So we'll have 1 times 1 over n to the power of 0 is 1. So we just get 1. nx choose 1 is nx nx anything choose 1 as itself times 1 over n plus nx choose 2 well we start with nx multiply by nx minus 1 and divide by 2 factorial that's how we work out these combinations so you might have want to check up on combinations times 1 over n all squared that's just 1 over n squared plus nx c3 that's going to be nx times nx minus 1 times nx minus 2, this will be divided by 3 factorial, and we have 1 over n cubed, etc. Okay, I've done a bit of ex expanding here. I've multiplied nx into nx minus 1, and I've done a bit of multiplication here. You don't have to worry too much about the details. It's just algebra. Um, what, I, what I want to do next is get the limit as n tends towards infinity of this. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, the 1 plus x term, d 
these two terms don't involve n. But look at this term here. How do I take the limit as n tends towards infinity of this term? Well, if I leave it as it stands, we're going to get infinity over infinity, which is not defined. It's not equal to 1, by the way. We're going to get infinity squared times x squared minus infinity times x. Well, it's debatable what, what, what that is. Um, so as this thing stands, we can't take the limit. So what we what we do, as, I, as I've explained in other videos, is divide above and below by the highest power of n. So the highest power of n is n squared. So we divide above and below by n squared. And if you do that, what you will get is x squared minus x over n divided by 2 factorial. That's what you'll get for this term here. Now if you let n tend towards infinity, well, we have x over n. x is some number. But if n goes off to infinity, x over n will go to 0. So we'll be left with x squared over 2 factorial. Something similar will happen here if I divide ab above and below by the highest power of n, which is actually n cubed for this term here. This is what I'll get. Um, you'll see that the leading term involves x cubed, and when we divide by n cubed, this we just have x cubed. You know, so the leading term in all of these terms will be x to a power. So I haven't written in the next term, but the next term will involve n to the power of 4, x to the power of 4, all over 4 factorial. That'll be the next term. Um, and then we'll have decreasing powers of n. We'll have n to the power of 4 in the denominator, and we'll have a term involving n cubed, etc. So when I take the limit for this situation, I'll be dividing above and below by n to the power of 4. And when I take the limit, what will happen is I'll be left at x to the power of 4 over 4 factorial. Just like here, when I take the limit as n tends towards infinity, this will go to 0 and this will go to 0, and we'll be left at x cubed over 3 factorial. So what we get is this infinite series. The general term is x to the power of n over n factorial. Um, you can see, for example, when n is 1, we'll have x to the 1 over 1 factorial. When n is 0, you know, we'll have x to the power of 0 over 0 factorial. Well, x to the power of 0 is just 1. 0 factorial itself is defined to be equal to 1. So we'll have 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay, so n begins at 0. So we have n0, n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Of course, we said that um, this limit, which I've written down here, was e to the power of x. So we found a series expansion for e to the power of x, where x is any number. So that tells us, for example, that if x equals 1, then we get e to the power of 1, which of course is just e, must equal all of this infinite series with x replaced by 1. So we're going to have 1 plus x 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 squared over 2 factorial, plus 1 cubed over 3 factorial, plus 1 to the 4 over 4 factorial, etc. And we saw earlier that the number e is 2.718. So the more terms we take of this series, you know, when we're summing this series, the closer we will get to um, uh, the number e. So the sum of this series could be written as sigma 1 over n factorial n equals 0 to infinity. So that's what e is. So when n is 0, you know, we'll have 1 over... 0 factorial. 0 factorial is defined to be 1, so that's just 1 over 1. That's our first term. And then we plug 1 in, so we have 1 over 1 factorial. That'll be our second term, and so on. Now let's look at the derivative of e to the power of x. So I'm calling the function y, and I've written out the series expansion for e to the power of x. If we want to get dy dx, Basically, all we do is differentiate all these terms. If we differentiate 1, we get 0. If we differentiate 1x, we just get 1. If we differentiate x squared over 2 factorial, we get 2x over 2 factorial. When we differentiate this next term, we bring the power down in front, 
take 1 from the power, so we get 3x squared over 3 factorial. The 3 factorial is just a constant. We're just dividing by constant, so um, that, you know, we don't have to use any quotient rule or anything like that. If you like, you could write the next term. This term here could be written as 1 over 4 factorial times x to the power of 4. So we multiply down by the power, so we get 4x to the power of, we take 1 from the power, Now let's simplify this a bit. We get 1 plus, well 2 factorial is just 2. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is 2. So these cancel. So we get 1 plus x. What is 3 factorial? Well 3 factorial is just 3 by 2 by 1. So um, I can write this as 3 by 2 by 1. So the 3's cancel. So we're left with x squared over 2 times 1. But 2 times 1 is 2 factorial. What do we get here? 4 factorial is just the same thing as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the 4 is cancel. So we're, we get x cubed over 3 by 2 by 1. Well, that's just 3 factorial. So you can see the pattern. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the 5s cancel. So we get x to the 4 over 4 by 3 by 2 by 1, which is just 4 factorial, and so on. So you can see by differentiating this series, we just get it back. We just get the same series back. This series is the same as this series. And the series is called e to the power of x. So y equals e to the power of x is the only function which has the property that its derivative is itself. So the derivative of e to the power of x with respect to x, we can write it like this, is just e to the power of x.